We thank you for coming this morning to bless me. God gave me a message this morning, and I don't want to keep it to myself, so I'm going to share it. We are children as to the king. And God just wants us to know. But he also wants to, we to know that with authority that comes power, it also comes responsibility. Yes. You can't just sit back and let others do the work. We've got to get into the fight. we got to get into the game. This morning our subject Revival of Dry Bones. This is one of those topics, one of those passages in the Bible that you've heard about, that you've talked about, you probably read a long time. But God's got a message for all of us. When we look around at the world today and we look around at our community, at our churches, in our homes, God wants us to know he stands ready and willing to help. But we got to be available to him. Yes. Ezekiel's experience with the dry bones is chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, like we see. Chapter 37, starting at the first verse, we're going to read the first five. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them around about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very bright. He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Oh. And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Lord, let me know that first, country folk, some of y'all, you know, some of us are. You out there in the woods, you out there in your uh, 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 pastures and your fields, and you come up on dry bones, or you come up on bones, and they're just laying there, and you know the difference between a dry bone and one that's not dry. It ain't dry. Some some critter or creature out there gonna be trying to get that marrow out of it. It's got a little life in it that sustains them. So it's good for something. But you find an old dry bone that ain't good for just about anything. Sometimes folks pick them up and they get a skull and paint it and do something with it, but they ain't really worth anything. You find them out there laying around. And you know the Lord let me know that some of our churches, some of our communities, some of us, just like those dry bones, we ain't good for nothing. Right. We just laying out there and we may look good if somebody put us up, dress us up, or put us in a good looking building, but we ain't good for nothing. We got these communities around us, some of them are nice, some of them are big, beautiful, got big old courthouses, big old city halls, and real nice buildings downtown. And they ain't good for anything. They're not doing anything to the word for the word of God, they ain't doing anything for, for, for the, the kingdom of God. We are just like those dry bones. We're just like those buildings. We have to put life into those. God said he wasn't coming back here until he came back for us. It's our responsibility yes. to prophesy to these dry bones, right. these dry people, these dry communities, these dry governments. It's our responsibility to, to get into the game. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about Alabama and Auburn because we know how that works out. But uh, I'm talking about <laughs> The kingdom of the Lord. <laughs> we that move go on a little bit down. We don't want to get you for a nickel. We don't want to hurt anybody. Let's start down uh, catch up at the ninth book. Ninth says, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus said the Lord God, 
come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he had commanded me, and, I, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, and exceeding great arm. Yes. Yes. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, yes. they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our part. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out, come up out of your graves, and bring you to the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and ye shall, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The Lord has made a promise to Israel, to the children of God, and it gives us that he would revive your dry bones. The children of Israel said they had lost their hope, that they were being slain just for their parts. The churches today are being taken apart just for the parts. You see people who start out in church singing. They find wind up in the world like they're singing for money. Not for God's grace, not for God's glory, but for their own, for the world. The parts of this community, the parts of this church, the parts of the Christian community are being torn apart. They're being torn apart for the privilege. I'm going out there and doing something for the world. When God said, I'm your hope. You said, I've lost my hope. I can't find anything in my church. Are you looking for the, at the church? Are you looking at the pastor? Look to me. I am your hope. You are never alone as long as the Lord is with you. Some of us think that we aren't fulfilled unless we got people, mighty big crowds, giving us applause, coming to see us, praising us. But it's not about that. It's about your relationship with your God. Yes. Our relationship with God is something that we can't take for granted. And most of us think that because we come to church, because we say amen every now and then, that we're doing good, we're in the game. Wait, church. Let me let you know that that is a responsibility that you've got to have. You've got to do the will of the Lord. The Lord said he would breathe the breath of life into yes. you. Yes. I'm not talking about going up every morning and waking up and just because you wake up you've got life. No, that is what God is looking for. God is looking for us to be able to go out and take what belongs to us. The Lord said, told us to occupy till he comes. If we occupy this land, then we are doing what it takes to control this land. But we're letting this world use us, toss us to and fro, yes. knowing that unless we stand up, the Bible says once the breath of life is blown into these bones, they stood up. Amen. They were a great army. Amen. Exceeding great army. We are exceeding great army, but we're just like those dry bones. We're laying out and letting the world, you know, when you find a dry bone like that, you know, in, in, when I was young and we used to go through the woods at young age, we not care of anything. We go through the woods at a young age. We come up on somebody, some bones laying out there somewhere, but some dead animal done died, or somebody cow, or some drug that off so it wouldn't smell. And you see these, and like, they ain't good for anything except looking, I wonder what happened. wonder who that was. They ain't good for anything. Our churches today are just like this. Think of anything. But if the Lord breathed the breath of life yes. in us, yes. but see, we have to request yes. that. You can't yes. just stand there and wait, ask, wait on God to wait. You ain't asked for anything. Yes. You've got to request. You've got to ask God to use me. Yes. We are vessels. Yes. And we ask God to use us. Because God says, I'm coming back. Nobody knows the day nor out, but I'm coming back. You cannot wait until God gets here and says, just like those five foolish birds, wait a minute, oh Lord, I ain't got no oil. Uh, can I borrow some of your, too late. Too late. 
When God tells us to go and be ready, we've got to go and be ready. We can't wait and say, well, it's God. God said, I'm your light. Yes. I'm the light in the dark. As long as you have Christ in your life, there ain't no darkness. The Bible says, well, from light, darkness will flee. Yes. One match will brighten the dark house. Yeah. One match. You don't believe it, get away. Let the power go out. Y'all know how dog is right here in the but let the power go out. Strike a match. Oh, somebody got some light over there. Somebody got some light. That's what your light, your inner light, your spirit yeah. should be in this world, to this yeah. community. Yeah. You ought to be that light. Yesterday, you were the light to this community. Right. Everybody from all around here came to be fed by you. Now, what we're trying to do is get them to come be fed on Sunday morning. Yeah. Right. Also. Right. But you got to start somewhere. Yeah. First, they got to know that you exist. Yeah. First, they got to know that you're willing to feed them. Yeah. We ain't charge them nothing. Because God gave it to us. That's right. And when he gave it to us, he said... You are blessed so you can be a blessing. All right. All right. You are blessed so you can be a blessing. Oh, Lord, I'm tired. <laughs> That's right. But somebody died last night. They ain't tired no more. All right, so you can be tired or you can be dead. But we got a responsibility. We got a job to do out here. Right. And ain't no sitting down and waiting on somebody else to do it. Well, you know, Pastor. Right. Pastor's going to do that. If anybody else do it, we can count on him to do it. But Pastor, and we would talk with Somebody's got to love this. I am so thankful for Sister Geraldine and each other. Amen. Because before, you remember, I don't mind the crimes. Because I remember that we didn't have any. Amen. A church with our children is dead on its way out. Amen. All right. All right. I thank God for them. I thank God for you bringing them. I thank God for all these parents bringing their children. That's right. Because without them, it would just be us old folks. Right. I thank God I'm old. Amen. And I thank God I'm blessing that I get older. Yeah. I, I thank God <laughs> every day that I've got, every day that I've had. And I thank God for the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank Him for one day choosing me yes. and allowing me after all them years of running. Didn't want it. Because I didn't want, I didn't know anything about it. You know, when, when you don't know about something, when you have no information, you don't want to deal with it. Uh, you go ask somebody, well, what do you think about this? I've heard. Well, I don't want anybody to say I've seen people with it. I've seen some things over there, you know, they tell you about yourself. That's what I was scared of, because I was out there in the world. I don't want Don't prophesy. Oh, you are, you know, oh, uh, don't, don't, don't tell me about it, I already know. That's all I think. I'm going to go in the back of the church. So when he's telling everybody about it, they say, I'm going to ease out the back door. But I don't want to know. But God will let you know that he's God. Yes. He'll let you know that he can do things nobody else can. He'll not only tell you about your past, he will let you know about your future. See, a lot of people can tell you about your past. The Bible says gifts come without repentance. Yes. So there are people out there, there are actually people, not saved people, but are people in the world that can tell you about your past. Now, they can tell you some things that may happen in your future. But God holds your future. That's right. I don't care what somebody tells you, God holds your future. And these dry bones, God said, I, I can put the breath of life back into it. Not your power, not your deacon, not your apostle or your bishop. I alone. He said he sent his son to die for me. So I've got a responsibility to live for him. I know I couldn't pay this debt. I know I was a sinner. And as Paul said, I was the chief among them. And there's no way that I could pay this debt. But Jesus Christ came and paid it for me. Amen. So this valley of dry bones, we've got to speak to that valley. Yeah. Just like Ezekiel had to speak to that valley. We've got to tell them who Jesus is. Not only that, you've got to show them because people believe more what you do than what you say. Because right. y'all know a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers who get up there and can preach. 
Oh, they can suck the cone. They put, I can't, I'm too old, I can't put my foot up here. I can put, you know, they can really hum. They can hum, as the, as the world says. They can show enough hum. But what is it other than a show? I'd rather leave you with something. Yes. I'd rather leave you with something to let you know that there's a God. There's not only a God, there's a loving God yeah. who loves you. He not only loves me, I know he loves me. That's what I told him. But he loved you. He said, I make no difference. I'm not going to love sister over here more than sister over there. I'm not going to love brother over here more than brother over there. I'm God. When God made heaven and earth, that wasn't a man out there. Wait a minute, move, move the earth a little bit more that way and go up and off, back a little bit, put the river on that side of it. No, God did it. Everything that was made, God made it. Everything that was done, God did it. Yeah. If anybody can breathe the breath back in the dry bones, it would be God. He made the bones. He made the body. You know, I, I was reading, and there was one man who said, dry bones, there is a something, when, when you see a, a skeleton of a man, and just thinking about his zipper, see it, all these yes. bones. And he knew it was men by the by the bone. What happened to them? How did they die? Why did they die? It was just a valley of bone. Didn't say that was a war. Just said they were bone. Didn't say that was some from one side, some from another. That was just bone. But when God grew the breath of life in when he someone before wind told him he said it was a call of wind. Now the wind breathed the breath of life into it. When that happened, they were all one great, exceeding great arm. Yes. Doesn't matter what denomination. That's right. Doesn't matter what church you attend. We all are one exceeding great arm. Yes. If we yes. serve the true and living God. We all are trying to get to the same place. Yeah, right. I don't care if you take up collection board before or after the sermon. I don't care if you have ushers or whether you have men or women ushers. We're all trying to get to the same place. Now what we all have to do is pray and ask God to join us together Hallelujah. with Him. It's, it's good to be joined with your neighbor. That's right. It's good to have a relationship with your neighbor, your friend. But it's more important to have a relationship with God. Yeah. Because every once in a while, if you sit down long enough, you start drying out. Every once in a while, you ought to get up and you ought to, if you ain't got joy, you ought to leap for it. Right. The Bible says you can right. leap for joy. Amen. Sometimes we all have things hit us. Death, still sicknesses. We all have to go through things. But every time you're going through something, God says, I'm here. <clears throat> Here. Just like I blew the breath of life in the apple. The breath of life is blown, blown into the bone. Every time something comes to bone you, I got you. I'll take care of you. Faith comes by here. Hearing by the word of God. We look for our answers in the book. We find our answers in the book. It's good to go to somebody, a sister right here, a brother over there, and ask them what they think about the situation. Seek God first. Yes. Seek God first. My opinion is that. Yes, my opinion. That's right. Everybody got one, and I got mine. But if you call on the Lord, for well, pastor, I don't know how to pray. You know how to talk to them. You know how to open your mouth and speak, don't you? Speak to the Lord. Well, I've been thinking on it. I ain't asked you to think. The Bible never said think to the Lord. It said pray. Think on these things, but you ain't thinking on, on these things, talking to the Lord. You think. 
on these things. Pray means that you have a relationship, a, a, a conversation with the Lord. What he told his people to do was have a conversation with those bones. He told those bones to leave. Says the Lord. He told them. He told the wind to blow the breath of life into it. He didn't say, think on it. Think on the wind and tell it to me. That's not what the word said. Church, we need the word. More than you need a pastor, you need the word. More than you need a husband, a wife, a car, a house, you need the word. And the word is God. And God is the word. So you need a Lord. You need a Savior this day. And you need to be able to speak under those things. Speak it. You know, that same man said one thing. You know why the devil hates the Lord? Satan hates the Lord, I think is what he said. Because when the Lord can raise the dead. Once they did, they fall to Satan out. But the Lord can raise the dead. And you know, if you raise somebody from the dead, they ought to be willing to live for the Lord. So that one soul needs to fall. The Bible tells us that the things that Jesus Christ did, we can also do. The dry bones, the healing, even the raising from the dead. Do you doubt the word? Do you doubt the Lord? He said, the things that I do, because I go back to the Father, yes. you can yeah, do these yeah. things yeah. and greater. Yes. Lord, if he made one from the dead, Thank you, Lord. Woo! through you, a willing vessel, there's no telling what God can do. Turn storms away. Yes. Heal the sick. Save or sin six so. Yes. Church, I'm tired. It's a long day. Well, I, love the Lord. I hope that I said something to bless you. Because the Lord gave me this morning and I did bless you.